The Finest Horse in Town by Jacqueline Briggs Martin, illustrated by Susan Gaber. The Finest Horse in Town. For my mother, my daughter, my sisters, for whom I am still learning about memory, laughter, and love, JBM, to Karen, SG. Long before my mother was born, her aunts owned a store in a small village in Maine. They sold gloves and socks, cloth and corsets, needles and pins, and all kinds of shoes. They had a smart gray horse who pulled a shiny black buggy when they went out riding. We know they had the horse and buggy because a very old watchmaker told us and he was there. The prince was a beauty, the old man said, the finest horse in town. But I can't think who took care of the horse when the sisters were busy with the dry goods store. Perhaps it was a trader named Hooks who kept Prince in his horse barn. Every Wednesday at five o'clock, Hooks brought Prince in the shiny black buggy to the store so the sisters could go for a drive. And every Sunday afternoon, they drove out to the lake. But the horse trader had a sharp eye and he knew a horse like Prince would bring good money in the city. You don't need this big gray horse, he said. I have a nice little brown, just right for you. We have had Prince since he was young, said Stella. We'll never trade, said Cora. But Hooks wanted that horse, so he came up with a trick to take him. He painted spots on Prince with shoe polish and hid him away in a black pasture. On Wednesday, he brought another gray horse. Gray is gray to the sisters, he thought. The two women knew right away that something was wrong. This gray horse was slow and he wouldn't cross bridges. He has stolen our horse and sold it already, said Stella, who worried the most. He hasn't had time, said Cora, who was careful and quiet. When they demanded their horse back, Hooks laughed. You won't find another gray horse around here, he said. The sisters told everyone who came into the store about their missing horse. Friends told friends of the horse trader's trick, and by the next day, the whole village knew. It was old Hartford who found Prince when he circled down toward the woods looking for a newborn calf. There was the horse tied to a tree, still marked with shoe polish. Hook said it was all a joke, but he left town a few days later. No one said goodbye. The sisters were so glad to have their horse back that they gave old Hartford a pair of their best work shoes and a bell for the newborn calf. But perhaps there was never a horse dealer with a sharp eye and sneaky plans. We don't know. We do know there was a horse. The watchmaker remembered. He looked as if he were prancing when he pulled that carriage. Perhaps the two storekeepers kept their horse with a man who had lost one leg in a logging accident. Let's call him Sandman Bonnie. Sandman loved horses. He loved playing his harmonica and he loved a good joke. He brought a turtle into the store once and said it wanted new suspenders. He decided to surprise his sisters with a special trick. Day after day, he worked with Prince, practicing until the horse picked up his hooves and danced whenever Sandman played his harmonica. Then came the 4th of July. The sisters had the finest carriage, so they led the big parade. Prince and the sisters, the grocer's float, the fire wagon, the school children, the garden club, the town band sitting on the hay wagon, and several teams of prize oxen went down Main Street, past the library, over the bridge, and ended up at the town square. Just as Prince got to the square, Sandman Bonnie began to play. The horse started to dance. The sisters bounced up and down in their carriage, held onto the reins, and laughed. The grocer's family started to dance. Sandman played. Prince pranced. The school children twirled and jumped. The band played along from the hay wagon, and the firefighters danced with the garden club, but then Prince was quietly munching oats. He had danced enough. But the town square looked like a big birthday party. We should have treats, the sisters said. They bought all the lemons in the grocery store and sent for large blocks of ice from Pettengill's ice house. Everyone had lemonade and the children got extra ice chips. Nobody wanted to go home. They laughed and told stories and said it was the best 4th of July ever. The sisters were still smiling the next day when they gave Sandman a new silver harmonica and a fat rooster. Perhaps you can teach this rooster to dance, they joked. Sandman did just that. 
We don't know about Sandman Bonnie and his harmonica. We only know that the sisters had the finest horse in town. The watchmaker told us, and he was there. We liked your aunts, he said. They kept a candy jar for children who came into the store, and we liked the horse too. He would stretch his neck when we walked past to remind us he wanted a treat. Maybe the horse stayed in a barn near town. Maybe two children, a brother and a sister, helped take care of him. Perhaps their father was a farmer and their mother could have sewn dresses upstairs in the dry goods store. The children's job was very important. They got paid two pennies a week and in any case they loved the horse. They took him carrots in the fall and apples in the winter and led him to water in the summer, but the horse wouldn't stay in the pasture. The children had to watch for breaks in the stone wall and tell their father so he could fix them. If they forgot and the horse got loose, they had to find him. Once Prince was standing with other horses at the hotel by the lake. Once he had gone to the stream behind the sawmill. But the day they found him eating choke cherries was the worst. The choke cherries made him stumble. He could barely walk back to the barn. Their father ran for the horse doctor who gave Prince a dose of mineral oil. Your pal is mighty sick, said Dr. Fay, but you found him in good time. This medicine should help. The two children thought it was all their fault. They stayed right by Prince's stall and fed him water in a soup bowl. They didn't sing and they didn't quarrel. They told him rhymes and named the books of the Bible. Their quiet voices seemed to calm the sick horse. The sisters stopped by morning and evening. After two days, Prince slowly got up onto his feet and stretched out his neck to ask for a treat. In the fall, when Prince was strong again, the sisters took the children on a picnic out by the lake. They gave the girl a winter coat from Boston. They gave a fur hat to her brother. Of course, we don't know if that happened. We really don't know much about those sisters from long ago, who were my mother's aunts. We know they owned a store in a small village in Maine. We know they went out riding in a shiny black carriage. The finest horse in town pulled that carriage. An old watchmaker told us what he remembered, and he was there. The end.